Roger, Houston. It's Apollo 7. How do you read this time? Day two. The Apollo 7 team knows that the command module works. Plan to uh, refocus the... But things with the crew are not going well. And then shut it down. Wally Shira came down with a monster head cold. Shira's cold is misery in orbit. In the zero gravity capsule, his sinuses just won't drain, and he quickly becomes irritable. On Earth, astronauts might turn to comfort food when they're sick. In space, there's really no such thing. The space foods on the table here represent different meals throughout the day. So we have sugar-coated cereal, sausage patties, so this would make a nice breakfast. We have chicken stew, which would have been a lunch or a dinner item, and then butterscotch pudding and grapefruit drink. First experiments in space food were cautious. Could astronauts even swallow in space? Nobody really knew. In 1962, John Glenn proved that astronauts can eat, at least from a tube. He could choose applesauce or pureed beef. Early space food isn't very appetizing. Scientists freeze dry and dehydrate it into bite-sized morsels and coat it with gelatin to stop down crumbs. In space, crumbs don't fall, they float and air filters could pick up those crumbs and it would just create a maintenance problem for the astronauts where they would need to clean those filters more often. By the time of Apollo 7, added features make space food a bit more delicious. Wally Sherrall, Don Isley, and Walt Cunningham could rehydrate things that had a bit more flavor and dimension to them, dishes that might be more enjoyable and have some added flavors as well. Quite a lot of concern down here. But none of it is mom's chicken soup. The mood in the command module quickly goes south. It made Shira in particular a little bit grumpy. Okay. Flight director Glenn Lunny isn't used to hearing no, even from one of NASA's stars. I think it came as a, a bit of a shock to some of the people on the ground that you have a, a space crew that's not necessarily going to do everything you want them to do. I think we can work that out. Shira thinks the workload is way too much. When Molly had a cold, everybody had to be miserable. And, and there's uh, no experience with the helmet on either, that one. On the final descent, Mission Control tells the crew to put on their helmets. We tried them on this morning. The crew refuses. Now if we had an open visor, I'd go along with that. Shira didn't want to do this because they needed to be able to clear their ears as the pressure changed during the descent. Okay, I guess you better be prepared to discuss in some detail when we land why we haven't got them on. But it's your neck, and I hope you don't break it. Thank you. Even before the astronauts are back on Earth, mission controllers swear that none of them will ever fly again. <laughs>